Hello everybody, good afternoon. I hope you're all having a wonderful afternoon. <laughs> Trying out a, uh, a new function here on Facebook uh, where I had couldn't get it to work before. Um, we set the set the live event and it, it kind of counts down and does it all automatically for you. Um, so here we go. Just want to make sure we're all working and we're all good and we are. <laughs> Look at that. It worked for once. Okay, awesome. Hello and welcome to our Thursday afternoon training. Today, I'm so excited because I, um, I love this book. I've just got that sitting there. Now, if you're watching live, make sure you say hi. You know I like the, uh, the interaction. Uh, I am Emma Rhodes. I am the founder of Her Leadership Journey and the creator of the Inspired Leaders Academy. And I created this group about 18 months ago we started. Uh, and uh, so it's a group for women um, who are looking to build influence, increase their uh, confidence and to really move ahead in their career, whether that's through leadership and management or whether it is really just, uh, you know, that, that leadership role in terms of industry-based leadership. Hey, Janine, thank you for joining me today. Uh, so what we like to do here inside the group is give some live training, uh, bits and pieces on leadership and management, things that I come across that I find would be valuable for you. I will always share them. And of course, this is a place for you to share what's happening for you. Hey, Lauren, thank you for making it. Good to see you. Uh, well, your name anyway, because I can't see you. Uh, tomorrow we will. <laughs> Which reminds me, anybody who's in Brisbane, I think... I'm actually, I've lost track of how many seats we've got for lunchtime tomorrow over at the Norman Hotel at Wollongabba. Um, I did book a table for eight in there. Uh, some people have said they're coming. Some people are bringing guests. Some people said they can't come. I've lost track of that stuff. If you're in Brisbane and you want to come and join us for lunch tomorrow, 12, 15 p.m., let me know though so I can uh, just make sure that we've got the right amount of people coming. If you're coming along, Lauren, I know you're going to be there. Uh, let me know in the comments as well. It's going to be great. We had one of these meetups um, previously in the city one evening. I think it was about six weeks ago. And uh, anyway, we I think we had over 30 people who had RSVP'd and we ended up with a beautiful small group uh, thanks to some increasing tightening of uh, restrictions. And also we had a massive thunderstorm and hail come flying in and uh, that sent some people running for cover so they didn't quite make it into the city. So our next one, uh, I thought we'd do just a lunch, which would be nice to connect in a small intimate group. So if that's you and you're in Brizzy, come along, uh, let me know. But today I want to talk about uh, this book, which is The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Lencioni, Lencioni, I'm not too sure how to say it, I forget. Um, who's read this book? Let me know if you have. Uh, type a yes if you've read it uh, and let me, give me, yeah, let me know. Uh, if you're watching the replay, let me know if you have already read it. He's got some great books. I think there's another one floating around here. Um, I've got too many books everywhere. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's about a being an, um, uh, the, the ideal team player. Anyway, there's a whole stack of books. And the reason why the books are so great is because he writes through a story, uh, through a fable, uh, and this one in the five dysfunctions of a team, it follows a woman who steps in as CEO of a uh, Silicon Valley company uh, in tech that was, you know, it was, it was like the darling of Silicon Valley. They were on this big high rise, you know, high rise, high trajectory. And uh, unfortunately, the leadership at that time uh, went too far and it started crashing and burning. And um, it goes through the story of why, but that's just the first part. Anyway, uh, this woman who is known to the chairman of the board, uh, AKA there's your relationships, guys, um, has recommended her to, to be put forward for the CEO. So it follows the story of how she manages to turn it around and she does it through people. And so he gets his point across in in in, the, in a story. So it's so easy to read. I think I read this one for the first time once, um, you know, within a couple of hours. Uh, so I am a quick reader as well, by the way. So it um, 
it's really good and it goes through how to take the knowledge and put it into action. So it shares conversations that they're having, it shares uh, team meetup sessions that they're having and, and how she takes them through off-sites is what she calls them, where the team come together for a couple of days and they go through a range of different, um, different techniques and strategies and things to pull the team together. But the underlying philosophy and principle here is the, um, the five dysfunctions and I've shown you a picture of it on here, but let me, I can't see. <laughs> I don't work well backwards. So hopefully that will uh, clear up shortly. Anyway, so it's a, it's a triangle. And what it means is the bottom of the triangle obviously is where the biggest impact gets made. Now, these five areas, uh, I'll, I'll read it from the book here for you and then let's put it into some action. The bottom one is absence of trust. And ultimately, all of these will connect to each other. So if you miss out on one of them, the whole pyramid falls over. It's not even a pyramid. It's not connected. You're not going to get any results. So the trust forms the biggest one. It's the foundation. It's the bottom. And I've spoken about this for a very long time uh, because it does form the foundation of everything. If you don't have trust, you've, you've got nothing. So the absence of trust is the bottom one. The next one up is the fear of conflict. Then we have a lack of commitment avoidance of accountability, and then inattention to results. And so I will just go through them quite quickly as to what they actually mean. So he says the first dysfunction is an absence of trust among team members. And essentially this stems from their unwillingness to be vulnerable within the group. Team members who are not genuinely open with one another about their mistakes and weaknesses make it impossible to build a foundation of trust. So as a leader, as a manager of a team of people, are you creating that environment where people can be open, where they can admit their mistakes? Or is it something that means, you know, the moment you say you've done something wrong, the whole team kind of jump on you or you, know, you let the team down? We had this when I was working uh, in, uh, in it for Services Australia when we had uh, those temp roles happening. And it was amazing because while we were all temp, uh, they still, we were there long enough for them to start going, all right, we need to start getting some adherence to our goals and our time slots and everything. And, and our manager was so great. And because she made it safe for us, if we, you know, if one of us messed up and we got something wrong and it came back to us from the checkers, then the whole team, you know, the market kind of went against the whole team. Now we uh, were a bunch of overachievers and we all wanted to get hundred percent right. But the thing was, is that no fuss was made on when somebody got it wrong. It was like, all right, no worries. Let's have a, what have we learned about it? And we would talk about it in a group and nobody felt bad for getting something wrong. Like internally we did, we're like, oh man, I let the team down. I'm so sorry, everyone. Everyone was like, no way, it's fine. You know, look at where we're at. We're, we're going really good. And as a result, we got hundred um, percent week on week on week for multiple weeks in a row to the point that our team then became the benchmark and our manager just got elevated to the top to go, well, how come you're getting so the, these great results when all the other teams were, you know, down around 70%, 80% maybe, and we were right up there. And of course that meant the pressure got greater <laughs> on us. Nobody wanted to make the mistake. Um, but it, it, it just meant that we were there. We came together as a team that uh, if somebody made a mistake, we're like, oh, it's fine, you know, because we knew how bad they would be feeling at the time. And that's what brought us together through that. And so that's where I think, you know, they're talking about here. Are you allowing for people to make mistakes? And are you picking up on other people when they start to put someone else down for that and go, oh, man, you know, why did you do that? Why didn't you check this first? You know, that's the kind of behavior that you need to grab and stop because everybody's looking to you as a leader to do that. So this is where the, the trust really starts to be formed, creating that safe environment for people to be open and vulnerable and to make mistakes. And then the next one is uh, the fear of conflict. Now, if you don't have trust in the team, there is no way that you guys can, um, can start to ask for this conflict. Now, I've done training inside our academy. We did, we did some training just this month about conflict and uh, 
good conflict versus bad conflict. And when we think about the word conflict, can I say that word one more time? Um, <laughs> we automatically think it's bad, it's to be avoided at all costs. But actually what we want is people to start disagreeing. A, it means that they're engaged, but B, it means we start getting to hear their perspectives, their ideas, there might be something else in there. And so as a manager, you need to encourage this space for people to have this, um, this disagreement, go, okay, well, no, I don't agree with what you're saying there, but what about this idea? Or uh, this is my idea. You know how you go to meetings and people are just quiet and they don't even say anything? That's the worst kind of meeting, okay? So you wanna encourage this kind of, um, this conflict. You want to encourage the engagement uh, in debate of different ideas. Um, and so once you've got that, then you start moving through to lack of commitment. And he writes here, the, the point number three is a lack of healthy conflict is a problem because it ensures the third dysfunction of the team, which is a lack of commitment. So without having aired their opinions in the course of passionate and open debate, Team members rarely, if ever, buy in and commit to decisions, though they may feign agreement during meetings. So what you need is a team to walk out, whether they agree in the outcome or not, to walk out committed to these decisions, because only then will you be able to move up to the next one, which is accountability. Um, and so if you don't have people with a real commitment and a real buy-in and a real um, underlying, I guess, commitment to see this through, uh, you're actually going to get avoidance of accountability, okay, where people aren't calling one another out for what they're doing. Um, and it, it says here, you know, without committing to a clear plan of action, even the most focused and driven people often hesitate to call their peers on actions and behaviors that seem counterproductive to the good of the team. Now, I know that this is happening all over. You guys have told me enough times, I've seen it myself, I've experienced it as a manager as well. I know that this happens. Everybody looks to you to call out some kind of behavior that's happening. Generally, it's a lot around negativity. So things like, well, that's not gonna work for us, or we've already tried that, or they're never gonna listen, that's never gonna work, all of that type of behavior. The team, unless, if they can't call that out themselves, one another, you don't have this trust you haven't been able to have a healthy debate. Therefore, you have no lack of commitment to action and it becomes you telling them what to do and then trying to hold them accountable and uh, keep them engaged and motivated. But you just love how this is all kind of going together. You just do one step at a time, right? For those of you who like frameworks and for those of you who like uh, step by step, let me know in the comments if this is you. I know that there are a few of you in here that love the, just give me the next step. Just tell me what the next thing I need to do is and I'll go and do it. If that's you, let me know. That's me. <laughs> um, so if we have an avoidance of accountability, you know, everybody's playing the blame game. They're trying to find all the excuses under the sun for the reasons why they didn't get their part in the job done. You're going to, um, it, it connects to the next one, which is the inattention to results. And so he writes, value to hold one another accountable creates an environment where the fifth dysfunction can thrive. Inattention to results occurs when team members put their individual needs, such as ego, career development or recognition, or even the needs of their divisions above the collective goals of the team. And so like a chain with just one link broken, teamwork deteriorates even if a single dysfunction is allowed to flourish. Now, this is all written in the negative, right? And so it, um, it plays with my mind a little bit because I automatically just flip things around to the positive. So I like the next bit, which I'm gonna share with you as well. Um, he said, another way to understand this model is to take the opposite approach, a positive one, <laughs> and imagine how members of truly cohesive teams behave. Step one, they trust each other. Number two, they engage in unfiltered conflict around ideas. Number three, they commit to decisions and plans of actions. Number four, they hold one another accountable for delivering against those plans. And number five, they focus on the achievement of collective results. Now, doesn't that just sound like we wanna all link arms and say kumbaya? Like, how amazing would that be? <laughs> um, I love it. And he, he finishes off here and he says, um, if this sounds simple, it's because it is simple, uh, at least in theory. 
In practice, however, it is extremely difficult because it requires levels of discipline and persistence that few teams can muster. And so then it goes through about, um, you know, uh, a, a, assessing your team members and really understanding what kind of teams you've got, uh, where their, you know, where their strengths and everything lie, where their personalities and, and things lie, but also doing a self-assessment against some of those things. Um, so the book is great. It actually takes you through a team assessment and a questionnaire um, in there as well. Yeah, so there's 15, 15 questions. What I might do is, um, oh, no, there's probably too many in there. Maybe if you Google it and see if that's online somewhere, or get the book. <laughs> Just go and get the book. This is actually a library book. Um, my original is in a box somewhere, courtesy of moving. Uh, we were only supposed to be here for a year in this house, and now we're moving into year number three. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? So... Talk to me. So Janine, you love these steps and Lauren, this is all ringing so true. And this is it, right? You can, it is absolutely pretty much for every team that I've ever encompassed, that I've, sorry, I've ever encountered, teams that I've been a part of, there is always elements of this going. So here's the thing for you. If you like steps, focus on trust because without trust, none of the others matter. If you want to start developing a team, look at your trust. Now I've spoken about the four C's of trust, trust of caring, trust of character, trust of communication, and trust of credibility, capability. Those are your four areas. So if you want an action plan to work on your leadership and to get better results with your team, based on you know this model, if we start at the base and go trust, okay, can people trust me to care for them? Give yourself a rating on that. How do you show that you care for them? Can you do that better? Can people trust you as a person? Do they even know you? Are you open? Are you vulnerable? Do you share things about yourself? Do you take a real interest in them as a person rather than just business results? Do they trust in your capability? Can you show them that you know what you're doing? If not, start working on this area. What does that look like? Ask yourself that question. Well, how can I do that? What would that look like? How would I know that they trust me? So all of this is, it doesn't cost you guys anything. It's here to sit, get a pen and paper, take some time, sit down, sharpen your saw and reflect on these. Now this is here inside the group, go back and watch it again. And the last one is trust of communication. Can they trust that you communicate everything or do you hold information back? Do you only tell people what you think they need to know? How do they feel about being communicated with? Are you saying things in a respectful and professional manner? If you want more information on those four C's of trust, uh, let me know, just write that in the comments there and, um, and I might do a, another training on that, but it's inside the group here. I think I've done more. I think there's also one on my blog as well about that, but I'm happy to get into more detail because it really does form the foundation of everything. Um, that we need to do. So once you've got that, if you really think that you've got great trust within everybody, then the next level up from here is to start engaging in some healthy and robust debate. So create a meeting where you ask for people to disagree and see what happens. And when people start to go quiet, you can see, okay, it might just be brand new. But if you don't have that bottom level of trust, people will not speak up. They feel as though they might be attacked, they might be ridiculed, their ideas won't work. So really, when you're talking about trust, make sure that whilst they trust you as a leader, they trust one another in those four areas as well. So do they trust each other as people? Do you have those times where your team get to know each other as people? Or is it all just work, 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 work at the moment? I know things are busy. It's always busy. It's always going to be busy. It's going to keep going. Nothing's going to stop until you stop and go, all right, we need to focus on this. How well do your team trust one another? How well do they trust in each other's abilities? Have you shared each other's strengths? Have you had those moments where you can go, okay, this person's really great at this. This person's really great at this. Let's have a look at what jobs we've got coming up and who wants to step in and take over this. But let the team do it. Let the team start sharing that information. So whilst it's great for you to develop trust, for them to develop trust in you and you to develop trust in them, 
they need to develop trust in one another. And if you don't have that, and if you can't put your hand on your heart and say 100%, we are amazing and we all trust one another, then that's where you need to start. All right, so start asking some more questions on that. If you, if you wanna know what that looks like for you, for your organization, book in with a leadership audit and we'll go through that. So we'll, um, you get to do some of your own uh, assessment. We find your strengths. But then we can sit and have a chat about what this trust piece looks like in your particular team, in your department, in your division, and where those gaps might be to give you some steps to go forward. Because if you guys don't have this trust, then your whole ability to create influence is not going to work. So again, trust forms everything. If you've got that trust and you can, hand on your heart, say that, yes, you're amazing with your trust, then start creating healthy debate inside meetings and see what happens from there. That is your next step. All right, let me know how it goes. Lauren, um, more info on the four C's. Yes, I will make sure um, that we get that to you. And I'll, I'll pop something else in here as well. Let me know what, what you're going to change from this. If this is brand new to you, if this has been some aha moments for you, uh, if you're going to go get the book, Talk to me because I've come on here now and I've spoken for a good 20 minutes. Make sure that you don't just listen and go back to your work, but you take action. If you spent this 20 minutes time, what are you going to do differently? What's going to change, even if it is going and getting the book? If it's sitting down, doing a bit of a trust audit on you and your team members, let me know what you're going to do. All right. I will chat to you all in the group later. Um, yeah. And if you're coming tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, thanks, Janine. I'll chat to you this afternoon. Bye for now, guys.